I gotta do something about this heat. Well, I just got a gigantic heavy box delivered to my door today, and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. If you've been following a lot on Instagram, you probably also know what it is. Let's check it out. Before this video even really starts, I've got to give a big shout out to my dad for helping me with every part of this project. There's no way I would have been able to film, work, and get everything done in three days by myself. Well, you can call me a wimp for not being able to stand the heat here in Miami, but I got an AC for the bus. But whatever you call me, at least I won't be hot while I'm driving on the road. I got this air conditioning kit from Gilmore Enterprises. It seemed like the most cost-effective system in both time and money. That said, we knew that it wouldn't be the easiest upgrade ever, and that it would probably take a few days at least. Well, this kit is actually pretty cool. It comes with pretty much everything that you need. The only part that I was kind of worried about while reading over the instructions is that we have to cut the handbrake handle one inch up from the bottom, so it'll pretty much shorten it by maybe two inches. That was just kind of worrisome to me because I'm not really sure how to re-thread the bar that goes inside of it, but I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. We bought a pipe cutter to cut the handle so that it's nice and flat and not all messy if we had done it with a grinder. With everything laid out and ready to go, we started the install with my least favorite thing to do, drilling big holes in my bus. When we drill the holes for the compressor lines, we're gonna be drilling up through the bottom and we're gonna really try to miss the oil lines there so we're gonna move them out of the way and also need to jack up the car just to make it a little easier to get underneath it. What's that old saying, uh, measure twice, drill once? We didn't measure, I guess. We drilled the hole in the completely wrong spot in, in the engine compartment. We've got to drill two other holes, so yeah. Well, it's not all bad. Drilled the two holes now in the correct position, and we're gonna use that extra hole that we have now uh, to run all the wiring for the AC, so it'll look better. And I actually had some other wires down there that was just kind of pushed up behind the side of the tin. So this will kind of get rid of any of those wires hanging out there. We decided to skip forward a few steps and already get to drilling the holes in the front floor so that we could add some touch-up paint that would dry before we get to installing the evaporator lines. It's been a long time since I've seen that floor. It's really nasty. Gonna have to vacuum it and clean it. With that out of the way, we can now move to the more difficult part of installing the compressor. The main bracket will be held on by the top stud of the exhaust and the distributor stud. There will also be another bracket that attaches to the two front bolts on the generator stand later on. We got really lucky with the CV performance engine because it really doesn't have the same as the original coil. So my coil is already out of the way and uh, all the wires are out of the way and everything. So it's, it's pretty perfect. I also already had an electric fuel pump, which was another thing that they said that you had to replace. So that's two things out of the way that just make the job a little bit easier. And I hope we never have to take off the distributor cap on this thing. The bolt behind there is so close to the end that like, I don't know how anything is gonna go on there. Everything fit well and went on pretty easily, which is always a good surprise when talking about aftermarket bus parts. Correct. 
So we put the line on loosely just to see if maybe we could tighten it later, but it's just so difficult to get in there. With no space to tighten the compressor lines once installed, we tighten them up before putting the compressor on its brackets for the last time. We're just hoping now that there's gonna be enough clearance to actually fill the compressor up with gas. While installing the compressor, we ran into a little bit of a snag with the throttle linkage. Ended up having to move the throttle linkage bar that runs across the engine up to a higher position. So it's a good thing that we have the CV performance system in there because um, they were saying in the, in the manual for the AC that if you didn't have that second little hole on top to mount that bar, you'd have to like weld on an extra inch or something like that. So it's a good thing we already have those holes and we can just raise it up instead of having to do any welding or anything like that. We did have to remove one of the carburetor air filters to get to the linkage, but that wasn't too much of a problem just as long as you remember not to drop anything down the carb throats. Another thing we're really happy about our system compared with like a single carburetor system or anything like that is that the bracket actually attaches to the front exhaust stud instead of the rear one because I remember that on my Super Beetle I used to have AC and it was attached to the back stud on the J-pipe and it was just such a pain to get to so this is so much easier since you can just take off the front valence and the front tin and get to all the bracketing that you need to. We will need to notch the tin in the front a little bit but that's not really too much of an issue. We could probably do it with some tin snips or maybe a, a cutting wheel or something. Next thing to do is to add the pulley that would be driving the compressor. We noticed that the new pulley didn't sit flush with the crank and realized that since we didn't have the stock crank pulley, we would have to remove one of the allen bolts that keep the two pulleys aligned. I bet you thought we were gonna put that crank pulley on there with an impact tool. Don't ever tighten things with impact wrenches, I found that out. The torque spec that we used for the crank nut was between 29 and 36 foot-pounds. We adjusted the belt tension and the compressor was on. Well, it's together and everything's tightened up and looking pretty good. Now we just gotta put on the condenser, throw on the lines, put the grommets through, and put the blower up in the front. There's one thing that's definitely got to be said about an AC, that it makes everything just a little bit more difficult when you need to work on anything in the future. Pay that in mind if you are going to put something like this into your car. It might be worth it though if you live somewhere like Florida where it's a thousand degrees every day. Next step was installing the condenser and fans. Fans up. Lines to the left. We also had to remove my CB radio, but I'll find another place for that later on. Now it was finally time to install the evaporator. The brake is gonna hit it. You're gonna have to cut the brake down. Even though the direction said cutting the emergency brake was a must, I tried my best not to have to cut it. In the end though, I had to make the sacrifice. It would be worth it if I had AC.
Cutting the lever with a pipe cutter was a good idea, it turned out, because it allowed us to cut only the outside tube and not the inner bolt. That way, we could extend the bolt up enough to use as a button and thread it easier. We also had to cut the spring a little shorter as well. So yeah, the handbrake doesn't look actually uh, that bad. It's uh, a lot shorter than it was before, but I think that it'll work just fine. We threaded that little bar while it was still on the car because we couldn't figure out how to take it off. And really, I just, I don't want to deal with taking it off and putting it back on. Now we've just got to install the box and put the lines through and connect everything up. Looks like the wind is picking up. It might rain soon. We installed the evaporator lines through the floor and connected up everything on the bottom of the car. Up next we had the dryer which we had to remove the driver's side wheel for. With our first holes not going as planned, we checked where the holes were going to be located for the dryer very closely. After the bus's tough German steel getting the better of a drill bit, we got the dryer in and secured. We ended up running the lines a little differently than what was shown in the instructions, because my hearse bar brackets were too close to the lines. Because you have a bar in this, in this page, this show is coming up around. All right, well, it's pretty much done. The only thing we need to do is hang up the lines and we've been finding better ways of routing the lines than what uh, originally was said to do in the kit. I've been really trying to stay away from screwing things into the sides of the frame. Uh, I really don't like putting holes on the frame so we've been trying to just do them on the crossbars. And then we're going to move on to doing the electrical which shouldn't be that difficult. We also added a few lengths of extra lines around the new AC lines to keep them from getting damaged where they touched anything sharp. Plugged in all the wiring and tested it out. Of course, this didn't go as expected because the blower didn't work at all. We decided to take a look at the inside of the fan motor to see what was going on. All right, everything has been put in and um, wired up. Everything works well. The fan was having a little bit of a problem that it was uh, just up by like an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit too high, and it was riding up against the inside of the plastic for the blower. So we were able to move the fan down a little bit and now it works. We're putting the panels back now and tomorrow the guy should be here to pump it full of coolant. So we'll see how cold it actually gets. The blower works really, really, really well. Hopefully that'll be able to push air throughout the whole bus and even the passengers in the back will be at least a little bit cooler than what it would have been just with the windows open. I'm gonna start it up because I haven't started it up yet. I'm gonna make sure that everything is working correctly and that the pulleys don't like come apart from the engine or anything catastrophic happens before the guys show up.
Well, it definitely sounds all right. Doesn't sound like anything is falling apart in there. Um, I don't like how like misaligned that little second pulley is. I don't know if maybe we can do something about that later on, but I have a feeling that that might wear down the bearings on the inside of the engine a little bit. And I'm even wondering if I even need to use that second pulley because in one of the photographs that they showed online for this particular AC, um, it shows that I could use a V-belt that goes around the crank pulley, the alternator pulley, and the air conditioning compressor pulley. Not have to use that smaller pulley on the crank. Ah, so nice. Nice ice cold AC in the bus. So happy. Oh man, that's awesome. So the AC was installed and blowing ice cold air. It didn't look half bad either. I ended up calling the seller of the kit and asking if I could use just one belt for the entire engine instead of using that second pulley. He said if it worked then why not try it out. So we removed the second pulley and put in a longer belt. I can tell it's so much more balanced now without that second pulley on there. Oh man, it makes a huge difference. I'm really glad that we did that. Another thing that we noticed was that the throttle cable was rubbing pretty badly on the old style tube that we had in there because we had to move the throttle linkage bar up one notch uh, to clear the compressor. So we thought it would be a good idea to research some sort of roller ball bearing type of thing that we could put there. And we actually found a really good one from aircool.com. It's pretty nice, it's made of aluminum. Uh, it has that little roller ball bearing that I was talking about so that the throttle cable rides on that instead of rubbing up against the side of the throttle tube. And it also has a cool little Teflon piece at the end so that the throttle cable isn't rubbing up against the back side of the tube as well. So with the install finished, all that was left to do was to drive the bus, now comfortable even in the hottest weather that Miami can throw at us. The install wasn't that bad at all, and for the price and effort, I really wish that I had done this years ago. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for this week. So what did you guys think about the AC system? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my adventures, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.